We're going over to Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. I need y'all to push me. Shout preach. Come on, y'all got to do better than that. Shout preach. Because now I got to preach in 25 minutes or less. I'm going to try to make it happen. Amen. Genesis 1 and, 1 and 26. God said, let us make man. Mankind in our image after our likeness and let them have complete authority over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, the tame beasts, and over all the earth and over everything that creeps upon the earth. Next verse. So God created man in his own image, shout image. In his own likeness, shout likeness. Of God, he created them, male and female. He created them. He created him and then he created them. And God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful, multiply, and fill the earth. And subdue it, using all of its vast, reusing all of its vast, using all of its vast resources in the service of God and man. And have dominion over everything else. So I want you to look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, that is, that's going to be the wrong neighbor. Maybe we need to go two rows down so you can have your own space so you ain't afraid to talk a little bit louder than what you're doing already. Hallelujah. I want you to say, neighbor. neighbor. Shout again, shout, shout neighbor. I'm checking your image. I'm checking your image. I'm checking your image today. Checking your image. Uh, I, I, I happened upon a conference while I was out of town for work. Um, and, and one of the blessings to the kingdom by the name of Dr. Sharon Nesbitt. Uh, Y'all, truthfully, I, I was looking for a place to go to Bible study on Wednesday. And so I walked downstairs to the lobby. They was having a conference. And I'm nosy. So, no, I'm not really nosy. But I, I, I'm, I'm confronted. So I went in and I was like, oh, so what are y'all doing? They said, we having a conference and told me the lady that was hosting it. And said, well, who are the speakers? And they told me who the speakers was. I said, oh, interesting. Then they had Brian Meadows and Brian Corn and all of them. But they were going to be on Friday night. I said, oh, I'm going to try to figure out how I can make. I'm supposed to fly home on Friday, but I'm going to figure out how I can make uh, the conference. So I went Wednesday and I was on a Zoom call trying to pay attention to the service. Watched it late in the night. And I was at work Thursday. The Lord pressed upon me. He said, go. And I was like, oh, okay. I'm going to go. I went to the prophetic session. Then I went to the men's session. Then I said, I'm going to up, go upstairs and I'm going to take me a nap. And the Lord said, I said, get up and go back downstairs. I said, well, God, I don't really want to hear her. I want to go tomorrow, hear somebody else. And he said, I said, get up and go downstairs. I said, well, okay, Lord. I put on my clothes. I go downstairs and we have worship. We, they worship for about two hours. And after about a two-hour worship, I don't know about you, but the body gets a little weary and way of doing it. And I'm hoping I'm going to reap if I don't faint. And so Sharon Desmond takes the platform and she begins to preach. And in my mind, y'all, I'm on my Zoom call. I ain't really paying attention, but I'm paying attention. I'm in one of those kind of moves trying to do two things at one time. And she's preaching in the, uh, she's preaching about image. And, and uh, I wasn't paying attention. She was, she was preaching about Genesis 1 and 26. You know, that's my favorite scripture. But I felt like at that moment I knew everything that there is to know about Genesis 1 and 26. So I wasn't really, you know how we do. We take out our cell phones. We text a little bit and try to not make, not make it obvious in church, you know, that we're not really paying attention. And that was, that was me in the service. And so about 15 minutes into the message, she takes a turn. And she says a thing. And she said, the Lord told me to build a city. And my eyes went up. And I, in my mind, I said, the Lord told me to build a city. And from 15 minutes into her message to the end of her message, she said, the Lord has changed my message. I don't know who this is for. And she solely talked about the vision. And every part of her vision was the same one God gave me. By the time she, by the time she got, I'm the only one in the room with my hands lifted for about 45 minutes to an hour. I'm just standing. Everybody else around the room just looking. And I'm, all, I'm like, God, how would you hijack a sermon just to give me this level of revelation? And so I left out of there, y'all, fool. Also, not like a thief, but I said, I got to take that message back of image to the body of believers at the Word Center. Now, of course, it's not going to be the same one because I went and started to get more of a revelation so that it's not her sermon. But I want to talk to you about how God comes and confronts your faith. Where your image is a problem. Yeah. When God comes to confront your faith where your image is a problem, a lot of times we think image is uh, uh, what, whether or not we care about whether or not people like us or what they think about our praise or what they think about our clothes or how we function. But this, this image that God is going to deal with in the next season has nothing to do with your outward appearance. 
how you function and what you do. This level of image has everything to do with the way you believe. God is coming after the image of your belief system. Because there is an image tied to your belief system that's hindering the plans of God from manifesting in your life. Huh? And there's a problem somewhere in your faith. And that's why we are under manifest, manifested in the levels of faith of our life. And so in moments and seasons where we're feeling downtrodden, we should be. Because we're not actually going through the seasons of God that he had planned for us. Y'all won't catch that in a minute. Touch yourself say it's because of image. Y'all help me, Holy Ghost. Maybe the next service, they just going to have to come in and catch the end of it. I, because I, I got to get this. So, so shout image. image. So he said, let us make man in our own image, in our own likeness. Uh, and so shout God is a spirit. Y'all got to talk back to me. God is a spirit. Uh, there can be no image or likeness of him in a normal sense of the words. So there can be no likeness. There can be no image in the normal sense. And since God is a spirit, then image and likeness has to be uh, watch this, of a spirit form. The image and likeness cannot be of a natural form, which means how you look in the natural has nothing to do with the image of God. Which means the old season of the definition of image and the idolatry of image has nothing to do with a natural sense. Y'all, y'all, y'all. So, so I said, God, what are you saying? He said, it's not of a natural form. He said, therefore, letting the believer know that it is the spirit of the man that determines what image he is in. Need y'all to go with me. Shout image. image. Tesalam. T-E-S-E-L-E-M. Tesalam. Means to be carved out or to be cut out. Image. To be carved out and to be cut out. When God made man, he took woman. He went into Adam and he carved or cut woman out of man. He went into man and he carved and cut woman out of man and he made her a tesalam, an image of man. Okay, you're going to catch it in just a second. So woman now is an image of man because she was carved out or cut out of man. Go over to Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3. Write these down so you can study them later. It says the Son uh, is the expression of the glory of God. Jesus is talking about right here. Jesus is the sole expression of the glory of God. Watch this, y'all. The light being and the outraying of radiance of the divine. He is, write this down, the perfect imprint of the very image of God's nature. This is saying that Jesus is the image of God's nature, which means that when Jesus comes into the earth, he doesn't have one nature, he has two natures. And the nature of Jesus is the nature of God. I just told you, you got to bring your capacity up. I want you to catch it. So Jesus then, y'all see it there, is the uh, perfect imprint of the nature of God. God, do y'all see it? Very image of God's nature. Image. In this particular text, image is character. Spelled with a K in the Hebrew. It is used, watch this, to talk about nature. Okay, then I looked up the word nature and I found the word hypostasis. Okay, and I'm not going to spell all these words, but hypostasis, say it, hypostasis. Hypostasis is a theological term that means hypostatic union. This is the word of the day. You need to write this down. Hypostatic union. H-Y-P-O-S-T-A-T-I-C. Hypostatic union. It is a fancy way of saying Jesus is both God and man. He's not two separate beings. He is one being in one. Which means his two natures are not separate. This means that the problem in us is that we have imagery, but our images are all separate. I need, you to, I need you to go with me. Watch this. So the doctrine teaches that Jesus has two natures, one fully human and one fully divine. Shout divine. So he was fully human. He was fully divine. He wasn't part human and part divine. He was fully both of them. Okay, so he's one person, not two. Two natures, they are united. Two natures united. Hypostasis is two natures united. Two natures united. You have two natures. You have a natural nature in your flesh. 
and you have a spiritual nature, okay, catch it, y'all, then this suggests that the confusion of the human identity then lies in the division of your two natures. Your two natures have not married yet. Okay, okay. I'm, 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 I, give me 1 John 2 and 6. I got to carry this quick. 1 John 2 and 6. Got to get there. Okay, he who says he abides in him, all himself also ought to do what? Walk just as what? He walk, which means that your walk can't be separate than your other nature. Your two walks can't be two walks. They just have to be one walk. You can't have a walk on Monday that's different than a walk on Sunday. You have to marry your walks together. The way you walk in your relationship with your husband should be the same way you walk in your relationship with your fellow brethren in the church. The two walks must be one walk. All right. So, so God is not a man. I mean, let me say that again. God is not in man. Write that down. God is not in man. I know, we've been saying it. We say, God and me. God, is a, see, that's the problem. Because that's why your two natures are not married. Because you're talking about God and you. I'm going I'm to deal with it. So God is not in man. Man is in God. Man is in God. If God was in man, then God would be the bride uh, or, or the woman to man. Or he would have been the one carved out of us. Y'all got to go. So if, if God was in man, then this means when he pulled the church out, then he would have been the bride and we would have been the husbandman. So, so it can't be that, that God is uh, uh, in us. We have to be in God. So man must leave and cleave. Y'all remember that? Two becomes one flesh. They must do what? Marry. Be joined together. Wife and husband. Okay, watch this. So, so when Jesus comes on the scene, he wants to show you how to perfect your imprint of your image. Watch it. Okay, so, so 1 Corinthians 6 and 17. I'm about to deal with it. Here it is. I'm almost there. 1 Corinthians 6 and 17. But he who is what? Joined to the Lord is what? One spirit. Uh, with who? If you join. Join is a word for marriage. To be joined. To be joined, okay? Therefore, man is in God because man is the one carved out of God. Catch it? So if man is carved out of God, that's why man is the bride or the wife of the husband man, Christ. Are you with me? Christ is the perfect imprint of God and his nature. And it says the son is the reflection of the glory of God, which means Christ is the glory of the father. Catch, catch, catch. So, so according to my analysis then, woman, wife, church, bride should be the glory of man, which means the church should be the glory of Christ, but my wife should be the glory of me. Are you with me so far? Not all women, one woman, one wife. Not all women, one woman, one wife. Not all women, one woman, one wife. There is only one woman. That is my glory and my image. Only one. That's why he that finds a wife finds a good thing because I find the one that was carved out of me. This is when we have problems in relationship because you're dealing with one that you've either not been carved out of. Okay, okay. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me keep going. Watch this. First Corinthians 11 and 7. I'm almost there. For a man indeed, watch this y'all, ought not to cover his head in so much he is, watch this, the glory, he is the image and the glory of who? Okay, so he is the glory of God. If he is the glory of God, this means uh, that he has to be the wife. The church has to be the bride. Okay, now Christ then was the only one uh, uh, in the earth who could show God's glory. Do y'all agree? Okay, what does the glory of man represent versus the glory of God? So when I am the glory of God or Christ is the glory of God, he sends Christ so you could witness, experience, and behold his goodness and who he is. Without Christ, you don't know how good he is. That is the glory of God. Which means Christ then becomes the example, image of God's glory so that you can know what glory look like. 
when people see Rebecca, God help me in here, they should know how good I am. Because she is my glory. Y'all ain't talking to me. So whenever they see her, my God from Zion, she should be an example of, watch this, uh, my goodness, my glory. How, what it means to experience me, encounter me. When you see her, you say, man, the glory is on her. Whose glory? The one she was carved out of. Okay, watch this. Okay, Which means the earth is supposed to experience who the man is is when they encounter my wife because the woman is my glory. Now, when you look at my wife, you should see a reflection of me. Huh? You should see her. I'm getting into this marriage. You should see a reflection of me. Who am I? The husband man. So my woman wife, bride, is my glory. Do y'all agree? Okay. So the husband, and husband one is the one who dies. The husband man is the one who dies. The wife is the one who's recovered. The woman is carved out of man. I'm going. And this is why when Christ died, they had to pierce him in the side because the woman came from, oh, came from the side of man. So Jesus had to be pierced in the side to recover his wife because he had to redeem his glory because man, I mean the wife, had lost the glory of God. Oh, so you don't have a husband until he has first died before he finds you. And any woman that finds a man that had not died yet has not found her husband man. The two cannot become one. That's the wrestle. Y'all got to go with me. Okay, so I said, God, okay, that's good. So, so, who, uh, so he died for the wife. They pierced him in his eye. Okay, so then man uh, dies for the woman. Okay. He sacrifices. He recovers his bride. Every time I die, I recover my glory. Every time I die. So it's like uh, when I want to be in me and I go upstairs and I have to lay out and pray in tongues and I get up and God said, that part of you I don't want. That part of me dies. And every time I die, I get more glory. So, so. So here it is. Go to Psalm chapter 8, verse 4. You know this. What is mankind that you are mindful of them? Hmm? There's a conversation being had about you that you don't know is being had about you. Huh? Who, who is man that you are mindful of them? Write that word down, mindful. Okay. Mindful means, watch this, a sensation that you feel in your body. It means feeling full. Who is man that you are full of him? That you feel in your body full. That was his definition. Who is man that every time you think on man, he makes you full? Remember, I said that the Lord said he wants to know, is he satisfied in you? Which means, do you make God full when he thinks about you? Because a man, watch this, that is the glory of God lacks nothing. They won't catch it. Okay. So if my wife is my glory and I am her husband, I work and I provide and I do everything necessary so that when she goes out, she's an accurate representation of all that I am. Okay. Which means that I work so she lacks nothing. Okay, okay, okay. So, 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 so I want you to see this. Uh, uh, what is man that thou mind for him? Uh, uh, I'm about to say something. Give me the next verse. This is, watch this, y'all. Uh, you have been made what? A little lower uh, than who? I'm about to shout. We used to say angels. But angels have a rank. If we were a little lower than the angels, then we couldn't control them. So we ain't a little lower than angels. We are a little lower than God. Are y'all with me? So that it, it notifies you of your rank. So your, it's God, he's sovereign. Christ, Holy Spirit. Then it's you only if you're the glory of God. If you're not the image of God, then you're not in rank. Okay, okay. so let, let, me, let me say another. So, so, so watch this, y'all. Say, may little Lord, watch this. And you have been crowned Watch this. You have crowned him, us, with what? He crowned who? Us. T 
touch yourself, say, he crowned me with glory. Wait, he crowned you with what? Come on, y'all, wake up. He crowned you with what? Watch this. Okay, why you need his glory then? MJ, they will be all in worship. We need your glory. Show me your glory. What you talking about? How, why you need it and he's crowned you with glory? Why you asking? See, you should be asking for glory when you already supposed to be the glory. Touch yourself, say wrong image. When you don't have the glory and you can't see the glory, that means you are not in the image. It is the wrong image. Okay, so I have glory. Where's the glory, y'all? Where's the glory? Where's the glory? On you, right? Right as well? Where the glory? You don't need the glory. Where is it? It's on you. So you don't need anything. Okay, prove it. David said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not what? When I'm in the image of God and I have a need that God has not supplied, if God has not supplied it, then what I want, I don't need. Y'all better write that down. That's one for the books. I'm going to say that again for the people in the back. When I am the image of God and when I am the glory of God and I got a need that God has not supplied, then this means if he has not supplied it, then what I want I don't need. I'm trying to deliver somebody today. Y'all, y'all ain't talking. Oh, and you keep praying for it time and time. And you've been praying for it 19 years and God ain't gave it yet. Could it be that what you need or say you need is a want that's not in the image of God? Mm, shout image of God. See, the problem in the church is, uh, uh, the problem is, the image you are wearing is not here, so you can't see his glory or the one assigned to you because you have an image that you think is yours, but the image that's yours is falling. Mm, I got to go. Here it is. Huh. Okay. It's falling. Okay. Watch this. The image that you got, if it's not God's image, it's falling. Satan is a fallen angel, which means his state and condition is falling. When you are not the image of God, your state and condition becomes fallen. When Adam messed up in the garden, he fell. Y'all ain't talking to me in here. And so when you disobey God and you don't do it the way God wants you to do, then your state and condition is fallen. What does that do? It changes your rank. Y'all ain't in here. It changes your position in the kingdom of God because now you are fallen. What happened to Lucifer when he fell? He lost his rank. Okay. Well, here it is. So while we were sinners, Christ died. Romans 5 and 8. Christ died. Watch this. Don't say for me, Jennifer. Write it down. More everybody. Christ didn't die for you. He died as you. Come on. Come on. Christ died as you. And when he died as me, watch this, my life ended. Because in my image, death is the consequence. Which means if I'm living in my image, catch it in here, then Christ ain't alive in me. Uh, help. And if he ain't alive in me, I don't have the glory nor the image of God. Here's, here, here. So, so, so if, it, if, if then uh, you keep getting up. <laughs> Come here, Dietrich. Lay down on the floor. Romans 8 and 3. Like, when you lay on the floor. Christ died as me. Christ went to the cross, went in the grave. Watch this. Christ didn't go down. You went down. Christ goes up. You go down. Where are you? Down. As long as you stay down, he gets up. And he is the image and the glory of God. Are y'all with me? You cannot be the image and the glory of God if you keep getting up. The Bible says only Christ is the image of God. Which means if Christ doesn't get up in you, y'all ain't talking to me. The Bible says if I be crucified with Christ, then it is no longer I that live, but it is he that lives. Catch it, y'all. So when Christ died, MJ, I died. Otherwise, I couldn't be saved. Where am I, y'all? I'm dead. Which means 
whose life is living. So when I died, catch it, y'all, Christ's life continued. My, my, my. It's not your life that continued. It's Christ's life. But the problem with the body of Christ is you keep trying to get up and live your life. But you are dead, and it's supposed to be Christ that gets up and live on. Are y'all with me? Okay, so now, catch it. What happens is God sends his son in the likeness of sinful. Can you give me Romans 8 and 3? Did you, you dead? Dead. Well, how? If you dead, you can tell God, I don't know about that. If you dead, how you can tell God, God, you ain't told me to do that. If you dead, how you how you can go where you want to go? How you can do what you want? Huh? How how can you talk how you want to talk? How can you if you dead? How can you choose your own friends? Y'all ain't talking to me in here, huh? If you dead, how then are you making decisions if you are dead? Okay, okay, Dietrich. This is what the body of believers do. Christ died, and they say, "Well, Christ died for me. I'm saved." Now, Dietrich, you get up. Go and sit down. Now, when Dietrich walks away, he expects the blessings of God because I am saved. But when he got up, he walked out of the image of God, which means he no longer becomes the glory of God, which means he walks away in need. Y'all ain't talking to me. He walks away every time you get up. And Christ don't get up. You get up with a knee. And this is when. Whenever a saint has to beg. Wrong image. Y'all ain't talking to me in here. Whenever you have to beg for something that comes with the image and the glory of God. This means that there's something in your life that is not in the image of God. Y'all. I ain't talking to me. Okay. I'm going. I got to get out of here. Watch this. Catch it. So Angel, he says to me, when I am born again and I die and I give him yes, I don't live. He keeps living. He gets up in me and when he gets up, I then am the hypostatic union. The two become one flesh. My flesh is down. Christ gets up in me and that's when the two are married. Okay, okay. So what are you saying, Pastor? Okay, uh, um, touch yourself. Ask yourself, are you a fallen man? Okay, uh, touch yourself again. Are you a fallen man? Okay, touch yourself one more time. Are you a fallen man? Okay. Not just man, man, one man, right? Okay, now go back to 1 and 26 because... I've laid a pretty decent foundation. Now I got to show it to you so you can understand what he was saying. He said, let us make man in our own image, in our own likeness, right? Let them, okay, let them. I thought them, uh, I'm about to eisegete now, y'all. Just stay with me. Uh, let, did you, you got it back up there? God said, let us make man in our what? Image, y'all see it? Image, make the two natures one. Okay. Jesus was the word, and then the word was flesh. Two natures, the word and the flesh. <laughs> the word comes before the flesh. Whenever the flesh comes before the word, then you are not married. You have married in the wrong order. I'm going somewhere. Watch this. So let us shout us. After our likeness, let them, shout them. I thought them was Adam and Eve. Said, let them have complete authority. Won't bother you, challenge you, Keisha, wants you to see them as the two of you. The two of you. You in your two natures. If you are married, that is the only way the you, that's the them, can have complete authority. Okay. That don't make sense yet. Okay. So I have a flesh and I have a spirit. If my flesh and spirit are not married, I can't have authority. 
let them have complete authority. The two becomes one. So if the two never marries each other and become one, then I cannot have complete authority because I can't be the image of God. The only thing that can rule creation is the two becoming one. Okay, watch this. So, um, we have spirit, right? And his spirit has the power to rule. Okay. Genesis 1, I'm done right here. Let me, let me see if I can simplify it. And God said, let there be light. God, the creator, spoke the word. And the word manifested in flesh. God spoke, let there be light, the word, and the word became flesh. Okay, Jesus, John chapter 1, was the word, and the word was God, and the God was the word, right? John chapter 1, verse 14, and the word became flesh. God spoke the word, and the word manifested, which means the only way that there's a manifestation of his word the word has to come first and then marry the flesh and the two become one. okay let me say it another way watch this okay. y'all got that word hypostatic now I'm finna really dig you out right here and I got five minutes and I'm done so Hebrews 1 and 3 Jesus was the image of God put it back up Hebrews 1 and 3 watch this he is the perfect imprint and the very image y'all wrote that word down image now watch this. And the image of God's nature. Write down nature. Nature translated as hypostasis. H-U-P-O. Not H-Y. Not hypostatic. But hupo or hypostasis. It means person. He is the perfect imprint and the very image of God's person. Now, okay. That didn't mean nothing until I exegeted it, and I went and looked it up. H-U-P-O-S-T-A-S-I-S is the same word found in Hebrews 11 and 1. Put it up. Hebrews 11 and 1. Now faith is the substance. Hupostasis. Substance is H-U-P-O-S-T-A-S-I-S. So the same word substance is the same thing Christ was in nature. Which means then that this reads, now faith is the person of things hoped for. I got to go. I got to go. I got to go. Now faith is the person. Faith ain't a thing. Faith is a spirit. Help me in here. And God is a spirit, which means faith then by nature is a person. Y'all ain't talking to me. I'm preaching better y'all. Amen. About to get happy. Now, faith is the person of things hoped for, the manifestation of things. Not. So faith then is the person. And faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the what? Word. Which means the word comes to bring the person faith. Ah, and the person faith is Christ. Catch me in here. Okay, so in order for this to be a right analogy, if my thinking is correct, everything on all sides must be equal. On the right side, it must be equal to the left side. And you can't find uh, no uh, hypocrisy in it. So let me check it and see, which means, watch this. Faith comes by hearing. Hearing what? The word. Who is the word? Jesus. Jesus is the word, right? The word became flesh. Shout person. So the word and Jesus is person in the flesh. They become one hypostatic union, which then means that faith comes by hearing the person called the word who is Jesus. Y'all with me? Now, this means that if you can't hear God, then you can't walk in the person God or the spirit person called faith. Because faith comes by hearing, and if you can't hear, you can't become the person, which means you can't have the faith. Which means if you show up in a season without the person and the person faith, then you can't have the season that God ordained for you. Okay, so then, then I kept digging. So without the spirit person called faith, without the spirit person called faith, it is impossible to please 
help me in here. Because it is through faith, by grace, that you are saved. So you can't be saved without the person of faith, which comes from the person of Jesus. Therefore, watch this, you can't be born again or become a new person, represent the person without hearing from the person you are supposed to receive. And when you are outside the image of God, you end up begging because you are in the wrong person. The person that's in the right person, which is the image of God, don't beg. The word of God says, you have everything. Y'all ain't talking to me. Which means that if I'm lacking, either two things is a fact. I'm either not in the image or I don't have the person. Y'all ain't talking to me in here. Okay, so now I kept digging. I'm done. Y'all right here. So, so shout image. Shout wrong image. God has given an image to the people in the place in this room. He said, when you show up, watch this. So I got off the flight, and uh, y'all yeah, been having stories about these airports. Get off the flight, and it's always neat to see. I always wanted this to happen to me. I think it did happen one time. Let me take that back. I got off the flight, and there was a soldier that was walking alongside me. And so uh, he was not from this country, but he lives in this country because he's fighting for this country. And so we all walk out at the same time. But when we go down the escalator, he got people down there with a photo of him saying welcome. Now watch this. People that are around knows that it's him and he belongs to them by the image. Without the image, those that are around would never know that he was the one they were waiting on. Talking to me in here. And so God said to me, he said in that moment, he said, there's an image that I am to you. That watch this, your season, help me in here, has a picture of who you should be when you show up to that season. And if you show up to your season without the right image, the season don't know. That you are the one that God meant the season for. Y'all ain't talking to me in here. I wish I could get help right there. Oh, well, God gonna give me the house. Well, when you show up to the bank and the loan officer see, watch this, see you, but don't see the image of God. That's why you were denied. Y'all ain't talking to me. When you showed up to get the loan of financing and you showed up out of your own, out of God's image, and it didn't happen. Y'all, y'all, so, 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 so. I said, okay, God, so what do you say? He said, tell them, they got to walk in with my image. In my image, there is no denial. Help me in here. Huh? He said, because in my image, he said, the season recognizes you because of the image of God. When you show up in your own image, the season say, I don't know if that's them or not. Y'all ain't talking to me. The image attracts the sources the resources y'all like the money the promotion in the season that you are meant to walk in which means every time you transition seasons without the right image this is why the body is missing the seasons of God and you think you just going through no you're in the cycle because you keep showing up to the season with the wrong image I said, okay, <laughs> y'all, he said, he said, I say to the image, have dominion and authority over everything that I created. Catch me, y'all, because when the image talks to creation, they should hear, oh, God. they should hear the voice of the one that created them. Y'all better talk to me in here. And whenever anything that's in the vicinity where my image talks, if they hear my voice, all creation will obey. Y'all ain't talking to me in here, which means if anything in your life is not obeying the words out of your mouth, it's not because the word ain't got power, it's because you showed up in the wrong image. If there's a devil in your house, in your marriage, in your finances, then baby, it's not the devil that got authority. It's because you are there in the wrong Therefore, he said, tell them, y'all ain't no longer coming to church waiting on the apostle prophet to prophesy. 
Because when you show up, you show up lacking nothing. I got to get, I'm trying, I told you faith got to come up. Because when I am the glory of the husband man, the husband man has already done the work. So I don't have to work. He took me off my job. Y'all ain't talking to me. He took me out of the field. Y'all, I wish I could get help right there. Huh? So come here, prove it to me, apostle. He said, now, when you talk as the image of God, you say stuff like, I am the glory of God. I am the image of God. Oh, that ain't working for y'all. Okay, let me try it another way. I am a lender and not a borrower. I am the head and not the tail. I am above and not beneath. I am beautifully and wonderfully made. I am healed. I am redeemed. I am reconciled. Catch it, y'all. Let the poor say, I am rich. Let the weak say, I am. How? Because I am the image of God. The image can't be sick. Because if the image is sick, it's a poor representation of God. Y'all ain't talking to me in here. So God would not have his image be sick and be a poor representation. His image can't be broke, y'all. Preaching right there, y'all. His image can't be broke. His image can't be downtrodden. His image can't be depressed, broke, busted, and disgusted. You can't feel, y'all ain't talking to me. You can't go in and out of seasons for years feeling like you were the least and the last of them if you got a husband man that has already paid the... Which means y'all staying with done. You can be in the right place with the wrong image and get the wrong results. Your results in this next season will depend on the image that they see. Y'all talk, watch this y'all. My next season ain't waiting on me. It's waiting on the image of God. Catch me in here. Ha, y'all, I'm telling you, this thing bless me. It's waiting on the image. So now when I show up in the next room, when I show up in the next space, Ah, uh, y'all, and I'm going to make business deals and make plans. Y'all ain't talking to me. I don't go as Darius. I don't go as apostle. I don't go as the prophet. All I need to do is show up as the. And when they behold his glory, I stand in the room and they say, who is man? Y'all ain't talking to me in here. That God, catch it in here, cookie. Who is man? Huh? When I walk in the right image of God, I'm supposed to have haters. There's no way you can be his glory and folk not hate on you. If you don't have haters, wrong image. Y'all ain't, if they not talking about what you got, wrong image. Y'all ain't talking to me in here. He said, tell them, you got to come. See, the struggle now ain't your image worried about what they're going to say about what you say. You need to worry about what he's saying about how you look to him. Because what you get in the next season is going to be dependent on the image you show up in. Huh. Help me in here. That means in every space, in every moment, I have to represent the image of God. Why? Because where am I? I am dead. It is him that's alive and living in me. So how is it that they see me? That's why Jesus says, he that sees me, don't see me. But see the one that every space I show up in, they say, who is this? The one that God sent. And when I don't get the God response, I say, that's the wrong response. Y'all, because I am the glory of God. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, I'm going to prove it to you. One last thought. Who is man that God is mindful of them? For he has crowned. When a king finds his queen, she gets a crown. The crown is an indication to everybody that's looking upon her to let them know that she has the same authority as her husband man. So to walk outside of the glory of God is to lay down my crown and to lose my authority. Look at your neighbor and say, pick up your crown. Look at somebody and say, pick up your crown. Now, if they don't want to say that, say wrong image. This week it ain't go to hell, it's wrong image. Wrong image. Huh? You're supposed to be the glory of God. Come on, find somebody else. Say, come on, come on. I'm looking for the image of God. I'm not looking for you. Well, this is just how I am. Nope, wrong image. 
Oh, well, this just my attitude getting no wrong image. How, you ain't going to get nothing like that. If you want the next thing in God, you got to say, no, that's not it. That's not what God satisfied with, wrong image. I got to show up in every space in the image of God. When I sing, it should be the image of God. When you hear me preach, it should be the image of God. When you see me move, it should be the image of God. And wherever the image of God is, everything else is. Miracles, signs, wonders. Come get this, Taurus. Because I feel happy in my sanctified soul. Because, Mo, go and get it. Because they, uh, I was struggling, y'all. The Lord had given me this expanse and vision. And I was like, Lord, I don't see how this is going to happen before I die. This is so much. I mean, how can a man do this at this capacity? Watch this, y'all. In Talladega. You know what he said to me, Thursday? Wrong image. If you try to do it in you, you can't do it. That's the wrong image, y'all. So I got to come and dig that out of you because that is not going to get the vision that I've shown. Y'all ain't talking to me in here. So I kept saying, well, God, they ain't going to give me that amount of money. He said, you asked for too little. He said, your faith was too low. He said, your faith had the wrong image. Y'all ain't talking. Your prayer life had the wrong image. You were saying the wrong things in prayer. You was asking when you should have been declaring. You got the crown of glory. Y'all ain't talking to me. And when you come to me speaking illegitimate, like you are a bastard, then I know you got the wrong image. Y'all ain't talking. Wrong image. Wrong image. He said, he said to me, he said, I said, build Kingdom City. Now, we were gonna, we were gonna come and say, hey y'all, do y'all mind sewing? Then you know how people do vision, you know, put the things up and we color the things, and that's good. Right? And we might do that. But God said to me, he said, no, wait. I don't want you to show them a vision that's tarrying or waiting. And you say, it shall surely come. No. He said, I want you to show them a vision that's already happening that they didn't know was happening. So when I prophesy to you that God is doing something you didn't know he was doing, you'll receive it. All right, y'all ready? So he said, build kingdom city. And he said, call it a city that faith will build. Y'all ain't talking to me. On the back side of the property, we've already erected tiny homes. Y'all ain't talking to me. He said, build houses. He said, build a shopping plaza. And he said, house the entrepreneurs in the room. He said, build a school. He said, and you form Kingdom City. And I said, God, that's going to cost too much. He said, wrong image. Wrong image. He said, because if I call it to you, I've already resourced it in my image and in my likeness. We were going to the vision. He said, and I'll give you strategy. And I have a vision team, and we were talking. They don't even know it yet, half of them. We had all, we didn't already start putting up the first one. We're gonna put up two communities of tiny homes. One of them we're gonna use for displaced single women who have children that come upon hard times. And they're gonna come and they're gonna need somewhere to go. And we're gonna say, go and stay in one of the houses in Kingdom City. Because that's what the kingdom should be about. Until you and the Lord get you back to where you need to be and you can have the faith for your next season, let us house you in that seat. And on the other acre, we're going to use it to finance the one where we're going to sow into the kingdom. Though the vision tarry, it shall surely come to pass. Guess what? I was in a moment and I, y'all, I kept fighting the vision. And I kept having the spirit of fear. And I said, no, I can't be dishing out this kind of money. No, I ain't sure. No, I don't know about that. And God kept saying, no, you got to do what I said to do. Because if you try to do it in the season I didn't call you to, you won't find the resources you've been looking for. Boy, I tell you, ran up against obstacles. I didn't tell y'all this either. Man on the property texted me and said, we need to talk to you. Because we don't agree that you should be your 
what you, I heard you're going to build for the low income. And I heard da, 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 da. You know, everything can be rose up. And I got on the other side. I had to make sure he was dead. I rose up. And I said, I'm not sure, but I don't understand how I have to tell you what I'm going to do on the property that don't belong to you. And I don't understand how you have a vision for a property you don't own. For he gave me dominion and authority. Y'all ain't like talking to me. Watch this. But I'll meet with you. My wife said, kept, she kept saying, meet. Meet with him. You don't want no disgruntled folk. I said, okay, meet with him. They come in the room, sit down. They trying to talk me out of, and that's how the devil, he'll come do. He'll come try to discourage you to postpone the vision. And I kept saying, I don't like this. Something about this ain't right. Then we started getting letters from the road department saying, you need to call us. Now, all of a sudden, people want us to do things and jump through hoops. And I said, God, okay, maybe you ain't say this. He said, wrong image. That's what he said Thursday, wrong image. Moves speed ahead. I had a dream. I was ejected out of a car that was a big alligator that come through. And I was, that really shook me up. I said, God, maybe I'm supposed to be dealing with the folks I'm dealing with. And the Lord said, I said, trust me. Do it like I say do it. I said, okay, God, I'm going to do it like you say do it. But where the money going to come from? He said, wrong image. Catch it, y'all. If he did it for us before, I'm, I need to talk to the word center right now. If he did it before, watch this, y'all. When we moved in the first building, we had but $1,200. We managed to tear the whole task force building out and remodel the whole building, catch it, y'all, with $1,200. Y'all catch that on the way home. When the vision grew, beyond what we could hold in capacity. He said, I said, move to the shopping plaza. I said, God, now we sure ain't got the money for that. At that time, we had about $33,000 in the bank. I got quotes to build out the sanctuary. None of them was less than 100,000. One man come down to 75. He said, I'll do it for 75, but that ain't nothing but walls. That ain't floor, that ain't ceiling, that ain't carpet tile, that ain't paint. I'm just gonna hang some sheep rock. I said, no, that ain't what the Lord's saying. Then he said, there's one in the house that can do it. He said, call him. So I call the one, because the kingdom got everything you need. Y'all ain't talking to me. We took $33,000. I'm trying to tell you, I'm trying to hold somebody right here. Because we were like the Zarephath woman. When we obeyed the prophecy, every time we went back to the barrel of meal, we kept getting bold. We framed in a sanctuary, built classrooms. Watch this, y'all. That cost us over a hundred and fifty thousand dollars. We had thirty-three thousand dollars, but the project we spent a hundred and fifty. Catch it, y'all. It was so supernatural that the bank man said, "I don't know how y'all doing it." Y'all ain't talking to me. Y'all don't catch this in just a second. He said, not only do I not understand how you're doing it, he said, you're doing it in COVID. He said, and let me tell you something. All the rest of the church's money going down. But every time we look at y'all's account, it keep going up. It wasn't in the bank account, y'all. But we spent and we didn't finance none of it. Because y'all ain't... Y'all, I'm trying to help somebody faith, huh? Because when God say do it and you move on God, it's up to God to do the rest of it. Your responsibility is find the faith called the person in you. So we built that building, y'all. <laughs> built that building, hundred fifty thousand dollars, y'all. Our first year in that building, y'all want to know what we took in an offering in COVID, where you couldn't come in and meet a quarter million. I was in awe because remember God said he said don't take up an offering he said because I don't want you to make this about money so we would not take up offering during service we, we've been still doing it at the end and our offering kept going up we didn't know how half the people weren't even going to the church watch this y'all pastor started creeping in the room to see what we was doing to check us out to report back to the officials to say we should be meeting in COVID Y'all, their account's going down. Our account's 
going. Y'all ain't talking to me. Can I, can I tell you? You looking at your account saying, how am I going to do this? Can I tell you what's in your account don't matter? As long as you're in the image of God. Y'all ain't talking to me. As long as you're in the glory of God. He got enough money to finance. Okay. I'm telling my story. Y'all, we're going to get there. Because see, by the time we get done, it ain't no way this should happen in Talladega. But you know what Dr. Sharon Nesbitt said? She said, the Lord came and arrested my confession. And she said, my confession was, I come from a poor family. And she said, the Lord came after that and said, that's the wrong image. Because if you born again, you don't come from a poor family. You come from a rich family. Y'all ain't talking to me in here. But if your confession is that your genealogy is poor, then you can only reap the poverty. Let the weak say, let the poor say, I am rich. So we got ready. Vision grew. The Lord said, you're supposed to have a shopping plaza. I thought it was that one. Y'all, y'all remember? I thought it was that one. I went to the owner. I said, the Lord told me to buy this shopping plaza. And he said, you ain't got enough money to afford this. I said, you can't tell us what we can afford. I just asked you how much it costs. He said, no, I ain't doing that. Now I realize, wrong image. Stepped out, said, okay, God, that ain't it. Started looking. We were going to buy Timber Ridge Golf Course. We had a we had a thousand dollars Friday thousand dollars we're going to put the earnest money down Timber Ridge Golf Course we were talking about building theme parks and all kind of stuff on Timber Ridge right there behind Walmart get a call say meet me on 77 it's okay for what I want to show you something get here no offense nobody say oh this is beautiful this is this, no it's some white people church right and he said yeah they said do you want it watch this yeah but I can't afford it wrong image I'm trying to help somebody he says I didn't ask if you could afford it I asked if you want it so all I need you to respond and do is tell me do you want it don't tell me what you can't afford. It's because if you try to afford it, you in your own image. I said, well, yeah, I want it. He said, not only will you get the building, I'll give you everything in it. You don't have to start from scratch. Now, watch this, y'all. We've been laboring. We've been starting from scratch. First building, start from scratch. We laid floors and walls and painted. Second building, we started from scratch. Third building, we got everything. in the right y'all ain't then when we got over here to the right land he showed me the shopping plaza again y'all ain't talking to me I'm trying to help somebody because right now we're living below where God wants us to be and that's because we're in the wrong image things are not happening because you're in the wrong image but you gotta touch yourself say I represent the glory of God I represent I represent the glory of God in the bank, you are the glory of God. In the job interview, the glory of God. Ha, we y'all ain't talking to me. He'll put your name in rooms that you didn't even know. And people are gonna call you in 2025 and say, somebody gave me your name. You were like, my name? They were like, yes, your name. And I just wanna know, here it is, y'all. Here's the prophecy. Do you want it? Let me in here. And this is gonna happen for you because you stepped into the right image and you're living in the glory of God and when I tell you stuff will happen for you when you step into the glory of God and walk in the image of God you ain't got to do it for yourself your husband has already done it. he's already done it. slap your name find it. this is a place to shout right here find your name and say neighbor come on this is a place for you to shout this is a place for you to shout Everything in 2025, I'm going to have it. Whatsoever things I ask, let me in here. I shall have if I believe it. Because I'm walking in the image of God. I am the glory of God. Debts are leaving. We are old no man. Y'all better hear me here. We are old no man. We're going to walk out of debt and into the glory. 
No man walks in the glory in debt. We're going to walk out of debt into the glory of God. If I am the image of God, God don't owe nobody. Y'all ain't talking. Stepping in his image. Gonna be in work. They're gonna be like, it's something over your life. You show this shine. I got the glory. I'm in the image. How something about you different, your attitude different. I'm in the glory. I got the image. Next week, the devil gonna show up. You'll say, no, devil. Mm, I got the glory and I got the image. It's in my marriage. It's with my children. It's in my family. It's on my job. Everywhere I go, there's the image of God. Have y'all your name again. Say, here it is. 2025 is about to be our year. Let them have authority. Come on, find somebody and say, it's about to be our year. 2025. 2025, things have changed for you. Come on. Things have changed for you. You already look different. They already see you different. You changed in the spirit. Hey. And can I tell you something else? Your season waiting on you. Find, some, find somebody else say, your season waiting on you. It's been waiting on the right image. It's been waiting on the right image. It's been waiting on the right image. It's been waiting on the right image to show up your season. Your season is waiting on you. Huh? There's a job waiting on you. There's a house waiting on you. There's new money waiting on you. Are we done? We got to do another service. They better come on in. I don't know. We got to go. I feel like going on home. <laughs> and saying they should have heard the spirit and say, get up early. Come on in now. <laughs> you hear what I'm talking about? All right. Look at that. Just tell them come on in. As y'all transition out, love on them. Show them the image and the glory. They don't know what they about to walk into. Huh? Love, it. Lo love on somebody. Hey, you can give on the way out if you so please. Have an excellent day. Invite somebody next week. If you by chance need prayer, come on. All I'm going to tell you is you got the image and you got the glory of God. How huh? When you go home today, image and glory of God. When you go to work tomorrow, image and glory of God. If you don't go to work, you're going to wake up in the image and the glory of God. Huh? Hallelujah. Favor is going to come to you. Blessings are coming to you. Everything in the image of God attracts the things of God. And from this point forward, I'm going to attract only the things of God. So, Father, we declare the blessings on your people, upon their families, in their lives, because we are the image and the glory of God. That's our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, don't forget, you all are invited to the baby shower. Well, nobody did not feel like you were not invited. You're invited. We're going to do it after the second service. So I know y'all leaving, but come on back. One o'clock. The image and the glory of God. The image and the glory of God. The image and the glory of God. Image and glory of God.